So I guess we'll maybe get started because I need to get to the operating room. Uh, I just have a brief presentation. A uh, patient that we presented upstairs, a patient that Dr. Mifflin's in mind, Mr. Elowitz, who's actually stuck around here just to hear kind of what's going on and what, what the thoughts are today. Uh, so I'll just present his history real briefly and then we can talk a little bit about differential, any thoughts that anybody might have of something that we didn't think about, and then uh, thoughts on how to manage his, his condition. So in brief, he's a 54-year-old male who presented to us with a six-month history of chronic recurrent swelling and irritation around his left eye. Uh, basically, the diagnosis that he was given was chronic uh, conjunctival uh, bullous chemosis. And he had been treated, you know, over the, the time prior to seeing us uh, for some blepharitis in both eyes. And was, at the time we initially saw him, uh, being treated with Predforte four times a day and azacite once a day. And he noted, you know, some occasional symptomatic improvement, but no significant improvement in the, the chemosis in his eye. Um, his past medical history is, is pretty much benign. It doesn't take any systemic medications. And the, the significant clinical findings, as I mentioned, uh, were some meibomian gland dysfunction and bullous chemosis uh, affecting the left eye. Uh, the edema kind of settles in a dependent fashion inferiorly. And, uh, you know, he notices that it kind of seems most prominent at the end of the day after a night's sleep. Uh, the, the conjunctiva is pretty flat and worsens over time. Hasn't affected his vision too much other than causing some occasional blurriness. Is that pretty, pretty close, Mr. Elowitz? All right. So in, in thinking about this, this is a long differential and it doesn't, it's not necessarily an order of priority of what we, what we considered as far as a diagnosis. But uh, in many cases, you know, uh, when you see a picture like this, you think of some kind of localized inflammation, uh, whether or not it's due to infection, uh, allergic conjunctivitis, toxicity from either topical or oral medications. Uh, <coughs> those would be the first thoughts. Really, you know, he didn't have any clear history uh, that was significant for anything other than having some mild blepharitis. Uh, and of course, this has only affected his, his left eye, really. So, we, you know, in thinking about this, we also wanted to think about, you know, along the lines of the more of the zebras. Um, as I said, the, the differential is pretty thorough, but uh, thyroid eye disease would be, you know, a consideration. Any kind of orbital process, either venous congestion uh, or mass, including all these that I've listed, carotid cavernous fistula, orbital pseudotumor, cavernous sinus thrombosis, orbital metastasis, superior vena cava syndrome, nephrotic syndrome. Uh, all those would kind of be on your differential. Those, they wouldn't necessarily be at the top of the differential. So our first thought was to get a you know, basic set of labs on him and then consider whether or not we wanted to do any imaging at that point based on those labs. The labs were completely normal. No indication of any thyroid disease or any other you know, ongoing uh, disease process. Uh, we initially got an ultrasound with Dr. Harry. That suggested maybe that there was a little uh, inflammation around one of the rectus muscles insertions, but it wasn't uh, a, a firm thing. Um, as I said, his exam was normal. There was nothing to suggest an orbital process. Um, we did decide to get a CT scan with him without contrast. That CT scan uh, was negative. It showed no mass, uh, no filling defects, uh, completely normal, no suggestion of any enlargement in, the, in any of the medial rectus, uh, any of the muscle insertions. So no, no e evidence of any kind of uh, pseudotumor process going on. So that's where we kind of stand at this point. We, you know, we continue treating him with steroids. He hasn't seen really any, any significant benefit from them. So, as I said, that was the, the workup we did. And we'll kind of open this up to the floor and, and ask if there, anyone has any other thoughts uh, on the etiology of this condition, any other you know, avenues that we, we should explore. And, and then what are thoughts right now about the, the next best step in management? You know, he really is bothered by this and would like to do something about it. Right. 
I did not put that on the list, but yeah, certainly. It does bother him a little bit, but it, it's it's not been, you know, awful. Some of these patients can get, you know, Dolan's. I've seen case reports, you know, with yeah, severe chemosis. Yeah, Dolan's not something that Mark had in his No. What kind of labs did you get? I think the ones that I ordered were the, the TFTs and the yeah. thyroid function test. So I got T3 and free T4. So has he come back with the He's not. So, you know, just my own literature search revealed that, you know, uh, this, this case series of seven patients, basically, this was an article published in Cornea back in 1996, and it, it's seven patients that were presented which, with very similar kind of clinical picture. Uh, all of the patients that were presented had the, a localized area dependent conjunctival edema that was present for at least a six month period. Uh, various treatments had been tried, and full workups were done on all of them, which revealed nothing. Um, the, the chemosis was, you know, did not improve and at the, you know, end of each case report, they, you know, the, the last statement was that it, the chemosis persisted in all of these patients. Uh, they did have conjunctival biopsies. Uh, those biopsies revealed chronic inflammation, telangiectasia, lymphangiectasia. And uh, basically at the, the, the article, you know, the authors decided to call this uh, chronic localized conjunctival chemosis, and uh, they said it was a diagnosis, uh, kind of an exclusion, and the, the etiology wasn't firmly established. Uh, you know, literature more recently just calls this, refers to it as lymphangiectasia. Um, and basically, you know, it's a disturbance in the normal fluid distribution uh, in the conjunctiva, and, and due to the, the, whatever the underlying etiology is, it's kind of an irreversible process. So various, you know, treatments have been proposed from simple excision to cryotherapy um, to kind of a modifi modification of the technique that's commonly used for conjunctival cholesis. Um, and Dr. Mifflin has actually had a couple cases similar to Mr. Elowit's case um, that he's managed in the past. So does anybody have any, any other thoughts about you know, addressing this surgically? Anything that's worked particularly well for them or? A lot of the reports that I've seen, you know, the goal is to induce some scarring between the conjunctiva underlying tenons. Uh, I've also seen some techniques that describe the use of fibrin glue during the excision to induce localized inflammation and kind of scar things down.
So um, can you go back? You've got a picture of this, right? I don't, unfortunately. How big of an area does this cover? Mark, it is just the entire area. I don't yeah. know what the percentage is. Yeah, it's kind of dependent. So uh, I've seen this where it's a little more localized areas, and then you have guys that show up and have that traffic, you know, down near the area where it's where you can see <coughs> the lane changes. Right. This is more localized. Where's the entire thing? It's about that thread. That, that's the big gap. Um, and then I, I mean, the only thing I can think of in, in trying to do that is, is just just tack this to the back because you've got the pressure of the lift. This it probably wouldn't really be very helpful and like in some cases it ends up being like a control mark in some particular process so sometimes you decide to go back and forth with Caleb of the muscles involved or tendons so I think in cases like this where it's mostly anterior it's probably not going to show that much. All right well thank you very much. <laughs>